When I was 18 years old, I made the biggest mistake of my life and converted to Islam. Hi guys, it's Joseph Colden and I wanted to make this video because after the interview with Anne-Marie Waters, a few questions uh, came up, uh, were given to me in the comments and I, I thought I'd need to make this video quite clear of where I've been and where I am now. So I went to university, I grew up in the Lake District and was never knew any Muslims as a child. Um, grew up in an evangelical Christian home. I went to church with my family. We were in part of the youth group. My dad and mum were in the worship team at church. You know, it was kind of an idyllic uh, childhood. But when I got to eighteen and wanted to go to university, because where I grew up is very grew up is very small, I went to Preston University, University of Central Lancashire. And you kind of get open to new ideas and you, it's the time of experimentation. So I was put into dorms, in mixed dorms, and one of my um, dorm mates was a Muslim. So we used to, they, it was in Ramadan and they were fasting and praying. And I was kind of fascinated about how, the way that they pray, you know, just the bowing and the pros, you know, kind of uh, reading and the language that I'd never heard. And I used to kind of join them for breaking the fast, even though I'd not fasted and I'd probably been out getting drunk and what have you. They used to still say, come in. It's where you're given the first kind of cushioning of, of, of the convert lie. So, you know, I left university and kind of had a bit of an understanding that Muhammad came after Jesus. And, you know, I didn't fully understand it, but I went to work in the hospital and I got a job in the CSSD unit, which is tools and instruments for the hospital. Uh, they provide all the tools and instruments for the, for the surgeries that go on. One of the surgeons there was a chap called Dr. Mian, and we used to talk very regularly. One of the subjects that we used to love to talk about was religion, and it's where the covert lie was then reinforced. So he was giving me verses in the Bible, and it's pretty much the Zachic Knight argument, you know, uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18, um, all these great things about Muhammad, Muhammad split the moon, and he did this, and, you know, I can get into these in more detail, but I think everyone who's watching this should know uh, the, the kind of Zachic Knight arguments and uh, the convert lie. And I fell for it, hook, line, sinker. Um, I started going to the meeting hall um, and started to learn the Shahada and eventually I said the Shahada and became a Muslim. My parents were outraged that I had converted to such a misogynistic religion but that's probably one of the reasons why I did. I probably wasn't the, the fully right reason. I had many other reasons but that was one of them is this uh, notion that if a wife displeases you, you can divorce her and marry another one. In fact, you can marry four wives. And the, and the guys in the group used to boast about this. Some of them used to say, yeah, I've got two wives. You know, I've got one wife here and one wife there. And, you know, they used to boast about it. And I thought, well, that seems pretty good. Um, but now I've learned, you know, the two wives do all the problems. Um, so I'm going to get to, it's a long story, but I'm going to kind of cut, cut through it. I ended up um, moving to Peterborough because I had met a Muslim girl and thought the grass was greener, the Lake District is boring, there's nothing goes on there, and moved. So I ended up in Peterborough and was fully practicing my faith by this point, learning uh, the Hadith, learning the Sunnah, and really you know, going deep into it. Then I moved to Leicester and carried on going into my faith. And it's where I got in touch with a group called Tablik Jumat. Tablik Jumat are kind of the um, evangelists of the Muslim community. They go door to door, knocking on doors, and um, you know, want to get Muslims back into the mosque. It's like the Jehovah's Witnesses of the Muslims. So I got into this group and they were saying, you need to read Sahih Bukhari, you need to read Sahih Muslim. So I bought the entire collections, I bought all the books, every single book that I could lay my hands on, I bought. Um, 
it's interesting because I've later been told that I shouldn't have really had these books because I wasn't a scholar. Um, but then when I went to the scholars and showed them certain things, they said, you should learn to be a scholar. I'll get into that in more detail later. I, I kind of went on with this um, this notion of Islam for a long time, um, nearly 10 years. I eventually met a, uh, met a girl who is now my wife and moved to Birmingham. And in Birmingham, some really quite dark times were ahead. Um, I, I eventually fell onto um, David Wood's material and I had all these books that he was referring to so it was certain things that he would point out and he would give a reference in, in the uh, days when he was doing ABN SAT, ABN SAT uh, with Sam Shimon and Pastor Joseph so he was giving references and he, he knew his stuff, he really knew his stuff so I was writing this down and constantly writing everything he said and then researching it and I was like whoa this is really in here about the stuff of um, the, sh the sheep verses and you know um, it's the satanic verses, things in the Quran, things in the Hadith. I really th thought th this is some compelling argument here. So I would go to the m Muslim community and the mosque and say, you know, I've learned this. I'm gonna tell them where, but I'd say I've learned this, and what does this mean? And they had no answers. They had no answers at all. Um, at all, they, they were telling me a stop. They were like, do you need to stop? You need to just practice and you just need to do this. And you know, you, you should stop looking at all that stuff. If I give us the books that you bought, give us them back. Um, I weren't giving them books back. I knew that these books, uh, you know, I had been put in, I, I've been given these books for a reason. Um, and I've kept on to them to this very day. During my time in Birmingham, while I was with my wife, um, we started to, I, she got onto my notes and she was reading all these notes and she started on her own journey. She actually started to pick up Sahih Bukhari and you know, look at the, the things that I was writing down. So it would have something like a um, Quran verse and you know, then the, 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 the section about it underneath and what it really means and then say the the commentary and things like that she started to research it and one day I think we had this conversation of you know was Muhammad really just a fake prophet was he a fake prophet and we both agreed that he was so what where that where does that leave us both of us now have come to the same understanding at this time I started to not pray like a Muslim I actually went back to praying as a Christian and opening my arms and heart up to God spending times in prayer uh, reading the Bible and God really spoke to me and that in these times you know I, my mental health was quite bad and um, I, you know I was really suffering because I was lonely in Birmingham and something quite amazing happened Nina my wife started on her journey to becoming a Christian as well. Later that summer she was baptised um, in a Pentecostal church in Birmingham and we have, it's a day that I'll always remember and cherish, the day that me and Pastor, I was going to say his name, another pastor uh, baptised my wife. But the family had stepped in by this point and they you know, wanted her to split up with me, and it was it was really quite a you know quite a hard time. So I ended up in Birmingham homeless services, and I've got some pictures for you guys. In the Birmingham homeless services, I was you know subject to just absolute acts of violence, chemical jihad, and at the same time I was full of zeal wanting to speak out against you know Islam I got into a lot of trouble and ended up um, it almost being the death of me there was drug dealers that were coming into the hostel supplying hardcore crack cocaine and heroin to um, people in the hostel one of these people um, one of the nights this is just one typical night um, ended up 
having his face slashed open um, and beat to a pulp because he owed money for money for drugs. Um, it probably that he was saying to these uh, people that I used to be a Muslim and you know how I left Islam and it it, it really cost me my life. Um, one night I. I saw someone trying to, I was upstairs and I came down the stairs and saw someone trying to break into my room. Um, so I went in after them. Um, that's when I was stabbed through the arm, which I stabbed here through the arm and uh, shot in the leg. And I nearly bled out. I think it was like three minutes I bled out. Um, it was horrendous. I just remember having this feeling like I was on a sinking ship and it was getting darker and darker it was such a surreal experience um, and a, a policeman coming in and uh, belting my leg up and finding things to tie around and stuff like that but I was passing out by this point and eventually did pass out woke up in hospital um, and was in intensive care for quite a few weeks but I still had nowhere to, to kind of live so I ended up moving into another hostel um, from the hospital and from that hospital I this, the people found out where I live uh, where I lived and decided to run me over so one day I was walking out with my dog um, and my dog broke loose of the lead she must have been pulling so hard because a transit van was revving so fast that it was screaming down the street it hit me and I uh, fracked, I ended up like this, um, ended up like this, so th this was this was Christmas, so as you can see I've got a Christmas hat, I broke my neck, um, my entire face was broken, um, my eye socket and nose, um, my femur, ribs, um, you know, this is me in a, on one of the better days with loads of fucking painkillers down my neck. Um, but th I was still recovering from the gun, the, sh the gun shot and stab wound. So if if you think that speaking out against Islam won't cost you your life, think again. It will. It will. And you you want to be not scared of these people at all. But always watch your back always watch your back because I'm very very cautious now of um, of where I go who I speak to and what I say and and what have you because it, it can end up like this um, which is quite unfortunate but it's kind of why I wanted to make this video of where does it leave me because me and my wife uh, were both now together we, we go back together and we both are Christian we we left the religion of Islam and we both are church going Christian we now have a two month old son and things are looking up we're moving from Birmingham we're moving back to the Lake District to start a new yeah, seperti firman Tuhan berkata Yohanes 15 ayat 16 demikian firman Tuhan Bukan kamu yang memilih aku, tetapi akulah yang memilih kamu. Dan aku telah menetapkan kamu supaya kamu pergi dan menghasilkan buah. Dan buahmu itu tetap supaya apa yang kamu minta kepada Bapa dalam namaku diberikannya kepadamu. Baik saudara-saudara yang diberkati oleh Tuhan, kita telah mendengarkan sebuah kesaksian yang luar biasa. Memang kita telah banyak tahu saudara bahwa Selama ini seperti apa yang dilakukan oleh Jakir Naik dan mencoba untuk mengelabui orang-orang yang mendengarkan ceramahnya bahkan sepertinya ada banyak kebenaran yang dia ungkapkan padahal orang-orang yang ada di kelompok mereka seperti yang disampaikan oleh uh, anak muda ini saudaraku bagaimana dia menyaksikan sampai dia bisa terpengaruh dan ikut menjadi mu'alab karena imannya yang begitu rapuh. Nah saudaraku puji Tuhan, seperti firman Tuhan yang tadi sudah kita dengarkan, 
bahwa kalau orang memang sudah terpanggil dan Tuhan telah menentukan panggilan itu kepada setiap kita, maka Tuhan sanggup untuk mengembalikan orang itu agar berbuah seperti apa yang direncanakan Tuhan di dalam hidupnya. Baik saudaraku yang diberkati oleh Tuhan, sampai di sini video yang Pastor Daud upload, kiranya video ini menjadi berkat bagi kita semuanya. Sampai jumpa di video berikutnya, Tuhan Yesus memberkati. Shalom.